My name is Dr. Ken Anderson. I'm a professor here at Southern Illinois University and I'm also founder and CSO of Thermaquatica Incorporated, which is a company that we've started in order to help us commercialize some of the technology we've been developing here at SIU over the last several years. The technology in question is called oxidative hydrodissolution, which is too much of a mouthful even for the scientists. So we abbreviate that to OHD. OHD is a very simple process that allows us to convert solid organic materials like coal into liquid products that are useful for making polymers like plastics uh, and fuels. OHD is very simple. It works by reaction of the organic material with oxygen in a water environment uh, temperatures at high temperature and pressure. The uh, process is very simple and inherently environmentally benign. There are no toxic solvents, no hazardous pollutants that are generated, uh, no serious wastes. Uh, we don't produce a lot of carbon dioxide uh, or other emissions that are, are typically associated with using coal. We can also use biomass, waste plastics, shales, and a variety of other solid organic materials. And all of them are converted to low molecular weight products that are useful for the petrochemical industry and for other purposes as well. Most people don't realize that they spend their lives draped in, in petroleum, in crude oil. The clothes you wear, the carpet you work on, the plastic bottles that you buy your soda in and so forth, all start off as petroleum. The way the petroleum industry converts, those, converts crude oil into useful products for you is simply to take the crude oil, to separate it into a variety of simpler products and then to convert those products into chemical feedstocks. So you start with petroleum, you fractionate it into smaller materials and simpler materials, and then you convert those into plastics. We take an alternative approach. We start with a material like coal or waste biomass, something like that, and we will functionalize that material and then fractionate it. So we take an alternative approach, whereas the petroleum industry will fractionate and functionalize, we tend to functionalize and fractionate. And that allows us to produce the same types of products that the petroleum industry has traditionally produced to make plastics from, uh, starting with a variety of other materials uh, and using a more, and more benign and simpler approach. One of the criticisms that's often made of uh, coal researchers is that coal is a dirty fuel. Well, there's nothing inherently dirty about coal. What's dirty about coal is the way we use it. Researchers here at SIU and at other institutions around the world have been working for years now to try and find ways to use coal in a more environmentally benign, more environmentally friendly way. The approach that we've taken in developing OHD achieves exactly that. We use only water as a solvent, only oxygen as a reactant. Both are abundant and readily available. We don't produce toxic byproducts and we produce uh, an environmentally friendly product this is the, the product you get when you convert the coal to a liquid. As you can see it's a clear solution. Okay, there's no particulates, it's not a colloid or a slurry or anything like that, it's a clear solution of, of dissolved coal. And that material is very biologically active, meaning algae, fungi, bacteria and so forth will grow in this solution very readily. It's not toxic at all to any of those types of organisms. So if it were to accidentally escape into the environment, it's not going to be the kind of long-term pollution problem that you typically have associated with releases of petroleum or other coal byproducts into the environment. It's unusual for academic professors like myself to start companies, but here at SIU this is one of the things we've been strongly encouraging over the last few years, is to help bridge the gap between the research that we do here in, in academia and moving that research out into the marketplace where it can generate jobs, generate wealth, generate uh, income for the government and for individuals. That gap between innovation in the lab and application in the real world is sometimes referred to as the valley of death. And there are a lot of good ideas that die in the valley of death. OHD is one that we've been working very intensely towards getting across that gap Thermaquatica was started to help us achieve that. Thermaquatica uh, was established about a year and a half ago now. Uh, we have established some funding. We're building a pilot plant to scale up this process uh, and to move it out of the academic world into the real world where it can, can benefit people and benefit communities. 
This is an instrument we use for analyzing the products. It's one of only two of its kind in the world. It's a combined GC, mass spec, matrix isolation, FTIR. That's a big mouthful. What it means is this is an instrument that allows us to take a complex mixture of products, separate out the individual components that are there, and analyze every component at a molecular level. Meaning we know what's in these mixtures. We know what products we're making right down to every last component that's present. The way in which we carry, characterize the product that we produce here, we separate the products through the, in, the internal part of this part of the machine, and then we capture the products on a gold disc here at about 9 Kelvin. That's about the temperature of the surface of Pluto. It's very, very cold, only a few degrees above absolute zero. At that temperature, everything is a solid. And we capture these materials as solids on a, on a very highly polished gold plate, and then we focus that plate into a microscope and that microscope allows us to collect spectroscopic data on the individual components that are there and identify them one after another. This is one of the small reactor systems that we've built as we've developed the OHD process. It's a very simple system. On this side we simply have a pump that delivers coal uh, in the form of a slurry in water. Over here we have a pump that delivers more water with dissolved oxygen in it. Both of those feeds go through a heater block to bring those fluids up to the reaction temperature that we need for a particular experiment. The two fluids are combined here in the reactor body. As you can see, the reactor body is quite small and simple. The product comes out of this reactor, goes through this device here, which is just a chiller that removes some of the temperature just by um, cooling it down. And then we collect the product out over here, uh, which is the converted coal and liquefied material.